God bless every one of you that un are under the sound of my voice. Certainly, I appreciate you for you are on God's mind. Why am I saying this? Jesus made a statement. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Truth. Truth many times is built on facts. Facts are the record of happenings. Things that have been recorded, registered, spoken while the action is going on. God is very concerned about the actions that take place in the earth realm and particularly those that happen in the United States of America. Someone would say, well, why would God be concerned about what's happening in the United States of America? One main reason is because this nation was established to get the gospel out. The gospel of Jesus Christ. When all hope was gone, when it seemed like there was no hope, God preserved the lives of men that were fighting for liberty of a man in this nation. After winning the war that caused this nation to be able to establish their own rights, their own law, their own freedoms, then there was a premise set that the word of God would be honored. Statements from the word of God would be followed. Actually, in our pledge that God is honored and included, our God, the creator of the universe, the father of Jesus Christ. Now, we have people that have turned and have established themselves as God. Small G-O-D. Why is this being said? Because this is not the first time that this has happened, but every time that it happens, there is always a repercussion. There's always something that happens. Because, and when I say that all there's always something that happens, judgment is always the result of people that turn their backs to God and do their thing. In Second Chronicles, the 33rd chapter, it talks about a king that inherited a nation. His name was Manasseh. Second Chronicles, the 33rd chapter. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. The high places were places of worship to idol gods. I'm going to skip down 
the fourth verse. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereon the Lord had said in Jerusalem, Shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. The 15th verse says, and this is the one that pertains to this nation. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hanan. Also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made, in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Now there was something else that Hezekiah did. Hezekiah caused much innocent blood to be spilt, meaning that there were children, babies, that were sacrificed to idol gods. What does this mean to the United States? It means that when you follow that which is evil, when people forget the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, and they do their own will, when they follow that which is evil, then people are set to receive their reward. Oh, yes, there's a reward for everything that is done. And some things, there's a re-reward. There's something that happens. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, let me say this to you, people of God. It is every person who is a uh, testifying person that they love Jesus Christ, that they are a child of God, that they are a follower of Jesus Christ. It is our responsibility to stand. And the Bible said, in having done all to stand, to stand. What does it mean to stand? It means to speak up, to do according to what we have to do, to take a stand against that which is against the word of God, that which is evil, that which God is against, we are to be against. We're to speak on it, we're to speak against it, we're to stand against it, and let me say this, we are to vote against it. God knows all things. You know, money has a limit. There are many, 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 many graves that can testify that money has a limit. If money could be the answer, most folk wouldn't even be in the grave. They would have bought their way into life, and they would still be walking around. But money has a limit. God is a man, a very present help in the time of trouble. But there's a way that we have to approach God. We have to approach God in humility. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, acknowledge that sin has been committed. This is what has to happen in this nation perpetually, continually. Amen. People are going to have to own up to the fact that millions and millions and millions of babies have been aborted. Amen. In error. It shouldn't have never happened in the name of the law. No, God is against that. But there are people that are standing that want that particular privilege enshrined. 
Our God is a God of life. Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So that is our responsibility to stand for life. Life. Life for the seed, life for the born, life for those that will, amen, grow life. Life. As I stop, I'm asking you to stand for life. Let's pray that people come to themselves, and if they don't come to themselves, amen, that their voice is overrided in the name of Jesus. Now, God, as I stop, I lose conviction power upon every hearer. From the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, I bind the spirit of fear and apprehension in the name of Jesus. Grant unto us more boldness, Lord, that we may take this stand in Jesus' name. The more and the more, Lord, if there's anyone that's not walking with you, That is under the sound of my voice. I lose conviction on them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. That they will come to themselves and that they will come to repentance. Lord, and that they will say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. And thereby that their names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, those of you that are listening and you have not yet repented of your sins, let me say this to you. Ask God, say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, realizing that when we do things that are not, amen, according to the word of God, that is sin. When we have sex with somebody that we're not married to, that's sin. If we have sex actually in the wrong way, that's sin. Because now people are marrying a man off. And so, therefore, they're not. Amen. Marrying according to the will of God. God never ordained that a man would marry a man. God never ordained that a woman would marry a woman. So, amen, there are cases that marriage wasn't honorable. And the bed is always defiled. But God ordained marriage to be between a man and a woman. And then you have to watch that. Because a a married man is not supposed to divorce his wife just because he want a better bed partner, amen, and marry somebody else. Well, (laughs) well, thank God for Jesus, amen. And as I stop, I want to remind you, amen, that you can give to this ministry and be blessed. Anybody that stands with the truth, you are going to be blessed. And God has raised this voice to go around the world. Amen. We are on Now TV, Amen Network. We are, have podcasts that go around the world. And also our Bible school, Amen, is a uh, it's a way that people can learn more information about the Word of God. So, Amen, I'm asking you to give and to bless this ministry and to pray for us. You can send your seed, your money. You can send your offering to through Cash App, dollar sign, Apostle Jean Morris Men, which stands for ministries. Amen. And God will bless you for that. Now, I love you. Asking those of you that are saved in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stay encouraged, and I'm asking your prayers. God bless you now. Until next time.